another great Sunday night, another great Resonate the Sound, and another great opportunity to literally resonate Jesus directly to you. Thank you so much for allowing us into your homes and joining us for Resonate the Sound. I'm Chris Honecker. Last week we talked about attitude. We're talking about exchanging negative for positive. Tonight we kind of continue on that road, this time in a little bit different form. There are ships, as we know. Ships. S H R P S. There are cruise ships, battleships. You name it. One of the most talked about ships of all time is the Titanic, of course. And we all know the story, hit the iceberg, ship sank. Tonight we take a little different turn. We still talk about ships, but we take a little different turn. This time it's of a spiritual sense. Here is one of our associate pastors, Pam Hovis, all discussing the subject, yeah, a little crazy, but when you watch it and when you take notes, You'll see why we've arrived at the title called Burn the Ships. Pam, take it away. It's all yours. Go get them. Let's go resonate. The Lord is so good. So good to us. And um, I have a sermon for you tonight called Burn the Ships. And uh, I, uh, I, I'm excited about it. I, uh, we all know that song, I'm sure, where they talk about burning the ships in the song, but I want to talk to you about what it really means in your life as a Christian. So if you would stand, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer real quick and uh, just ask the Lord to anoint the, the words already anointed, but we're going to ask him to anoint me and move me out of the way and uh, that we get our minds on Jesus for just a second. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great opportunity to be in your house again. And we ask, Lord, that you anoint me that I might deliver the word as you gave it to me. Move me out of the way. Open our ears, Lord, that we might hear what you have for us. And we want to give you the praise and the honor for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So burn the ships. And I'm sure you all have heard this uh, turn burn the ships before it's not anything new but I wanted to give you a little background on it and we know that this term comes from a, a is became famous because of a Spanish conquistador and his name was Hernan Cortez and he had he was told to go to Mexico and to take all the richest treasures that were known at that time uh, everybody had talked about these treasures, so he was going to get them. But the problem was that when he got there, there was an army there had, that had defended those treasures for years. And this army was undefeated. And it would have been easy when you, when you got to the land and you saw that massive army to have said, Forget it. Let's just go back home where we're safe. But this is not what he did. As they landed, Cortez commanded one thing of all of his men burn the ships. Now could you imagine your commanding officer telling you to burn the ships that just brought you to a foreign land? And he said, burn the ships. And he said, and his men obeyed him. The story says that one said, are you crazy? And he didn't make it. But the rest of them were obedient and did exactly what he, they told him to do. And that left them with only two choices. Win the battle or die. And that began to ring with me because his, his men had no chance for retreat. They couldn't escape. They couldn't go back home. They had to fight the bravest battle of their lives. And they won. They were the victors of the battle. They beat the army that nobody else could ever beat. And I thought as, as I read that story, how our walk with God is very similar Sometimes we have second options in our life that are not necessarily in line with what God has for us to do. There's other paths we can take along the way. Even though he has designated this path for us, sometimes we find other paths. 
And we begin to walk down those paths and we begin to wonder, why did this happen to me? And it's all because we didn't burn our ships or we chose a different path than what God had laid before us. Because sometimes it's an easier path. I'm sure they would have rather went somewhere and just walked in and took over the nation and had all the jewels for themselves. But to obtain their goal, they had to meet an adversary that was unbeaten. And he had to motivate them in such a way that even though they, they were a mighty army in their own right, he had to motivate them to fight the biggest battle of their lives by giving them no way of going home. No way you're going home. They saved one ship to send the spoils back to the king. But there was no way those six or seven hundred men were all going to get on that one ship and go back where they came from. I've wondered how many times you and I have made wrong choices and out of fear or failure chose the easy path or because we've tried it before and we failed, or because it's not exactly what we expected to have to go through, we compromised our faith in God. We do that a lot. Well, okay, Lord, I know you called me to do this, but let me just start over here. Or, okay, God, I know you want me to be this, but isn't she better at it than I am? Or, Lord, this trial's too hard, and if I just, if you just give me a few months to sit back and just rest. But in that few months, the enemy came in and conquered you. We need to realize that sometimes burning our ships are for our own good. I want to ask you tonight, what are the ships in your life that you need to burn so that you may be fully dead set on following God? What are the things in your life that you need to address and be willing to cut that off no matter the consequences so that you live for God and aren't tossed to and fro? Aren't struggling with what I should do or why I haven't done that yet or why haven't I accomplished that? And it's because you still have, you still have that safety net back there so you're not fully relying on God to bring it all about. And we get comfortable and lazy. I'm sure we have all said, uh, I'm keeping my options open. Or maybe just in case I'll hang on to that. I do that when I'm cleaning out my closet. I may not have wore it in a year, but when I clean my closet out, I, oh, I like that outfit, and I will put it back in the closet saying, okay, now if I haven't worried by the next time, I'll get rid of it. It's still in my closet. Ten years later, some of it, yes. But isn't that how we do God? Isn't that the way we deal with things? Instead of just getting rid of it because you know you ain't going to wear it, you will hang on to it and let it take up your closet space and then grab because you ain't got no more room in your closet. I have shoes in my closet I ain't never going to wear. Some of them hurt my feet. Some of them I liked when I got them, but when I got home, they weren't so great, and they're still in my closet. And my husband is griping because your stuff's bleeding over onto my side of the closet. And it's like, they're new. They just ain't real new, and I ain't never worn them. But isn't that what we do to God? We want a ministry. We want to grow in Him. But when it gets hard, we want to run back to the things where it's comfortable. It's easy to say, well, I'm gonna, I want the Lord to move in my life and put Him first. And then run back to those old friends when it gets a little hard. Have you ever noticed they come around just when you're struggling? That's because they're your safety net and you haven't burned a bridge. Now, I ain't saying you have to disown every friend you had. I'm saying if they become a hindrance to you, then maybe you need to burn a ship. If you're relying on them to constantly get you out of where God wants to put you, or they become that stumbling block to you, then it's time to burn the ship. Why put yourself in a position where the enemy can destroy you when it's in your hands to burn the ship and move on? How bad do you want that ministry? 
How bad do you really want to sell out and be used of God in every aspect on that path that he has for you? You see, it's up to us. Luke 9, verses 59 through 62 said, and I just lost it. Don't. Okay, there it is, you guys. And he said unto an another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me go to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. You say, well, that was kind of mean of Jesus to say that. But if he had his heart made up to go out and win souls for the kingdom, what good did it do him to go and bury somebody who was already dead? You say, um, you're looking at that wrong. Am I looking at it wrong? It's just an excuse to delay what he needed to do for God. Next verse, please. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but first go bid them fear, uh, farewell, which are at my home, at my house. Now, I know sometimes the Lord doesn't ever make us just say up and move out of your house and let's go. But has there been things in your life that you know you're called to do and you put God on the back burner? We have. I've done that out of fear or worry over being called into a ministry. Oh, I did that for a long time. I was comfortable being the women's ministry leader and comfortable sitting back there on that third, third pew, but don't ask me to preach even though I knew I was called to preach. So what was I doing? I was denying what God had called me to do out of fear or fear of rejection or fear of not being as good as so-and-so. And in so I did not burn that ship. I sat there in that ship for two or three years after I knew I was called because I was afraid to step out and leave my comfort zone on that second or third row back there because I might fail. Well, when God calls you to do it, you may make mistakes, but he ain't going to let you fall unless you turn your back on him. He said, and Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. I begin to think about a farmer, and as a farmer, as he is set in his rows, have you ever noticed they're straight? He, if he is constantly looking back at the things, the row he come in, his row is going to be crooked. If he's constantly checking behind him to see where he's been instead of plowing straight ahead, that row will not be straight, and it'll throw off the whole field. Or be like driving down a road, and you're constantly looking in the rearview mirror to see who's behind you. Next thing you know, you're in the ditch instead of on the road. You say, well, that's drastic, but stop and think about it for just a second. If you've got your eyes on Jesus and he has pointed you a certain direction and you know the path you're supposed to take, and you're constantly looking back at what used to be, or how it used to be, or why was it that way, or Am I doing it as good as so-and-so? How are you ever going to go straight down that path he has set for you? That's why we get discouraged. That's why we second-guess what God has for us. It's because we begin looking to the right and the left or back behind us and wonder, how can I ever do that with my past? If he forgave you, your past is gone. And the only person who's bringing it back up is you. You know, I thought, you know, Jesus is so good to us. And as Christians, we should not be willing to choose the simple or the easy path or the less painful path, but willing to seek the path that God has for us. I have found that I have grown more in those hard times than I did those times I sat comfortable in that chair back there. Or those times I, when I just thought, Lord, am I going to make it? And, why am I going through it? And he's always brought me through it. I learned more from those times than I did all the times that I sat in church and was just willing to warm a pew and not follow him the way he had set for me. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. 
Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And when we focus on the things that we want, or the worry, or, the, or being scared, or afraid, or focus on what used to be and what's behind us, how can we overcome that except through Jesus? There are times in our spiritual walk that we must make a choice to burn our ships. And during those times, we make a commitment to go forward with Christ. We must decide that faith is worth the effort, like Moses did in Hebrews 11, 24 through 28. And you all know the story about Moses. And he made a lot of mistakes on the way, but he still led the people out. He still got them to the promised land. But it said, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So what he's saying is because he believed in God. He was willing to burn his ship and walk away from all that he had as Pharaoh's grandson. He was willing to burn that ship where it was comfortable and easy, but he believed in God and believed in the things that happened to him and put him in that position for such a time as that, that because he was there, there was a purpose in his life. Now, he could have gotten, when he got mad at him and he broke the tablets, he could have looked back and said, I'm going back there. But he had burnt that bridge, and that was never an option. Never, he never thought about that. He looked forward to what he was going to do, even though they were difficult. I began, he burned a ship. He could not return to what was. He, was. he went forward, and though he made many mistakes, God still used him. He can still use you today. Elisha, Elisha burned a ship when he left with Elijah, if you'll read in 1 Kings 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he went with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back for him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. And then he arose and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. You say, why did he have to kill the ox? And why did he have to burn the implements of his living? That's how he made his living. If they're not there, he has nothing to go back for. So he burned a bridge so that he could follow the man of God and become himself a mighty man of God. But it took burning a bridge. It, it took being able to close off that escape hatch so that you couldn't get out and go. And some of us need to learn from these examples of how it is easy to look at the circumstances and think I made a mistake. But if you've sold out to God and you've burnt that bridge on those things that always haunt you, then they're no longer a choice for you to make. Leave the things that can hinder us behind. Do not revisit them. What could be, what should have been, but look forward to what is possible and ahead on the path God has laid out for us. In Philippians 3 and 13 through 15, Paul said this, Brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended, but this thing, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. It didn't matter what was behind him. He has one of the greatest stories in the Bible of how he was a persecutor of Christians. And he could have felt sorry for himself and looked back on that daily. In fact, because of his breeding, he could have went back and done that life anytime he wanted. But he burned a bridge because he believed in Jesus. Because when he met Jesus, there was a miraculous change in him. 
He knew immediately who was speaking to him. And with that change came a mighty man of God. So don't tell me you can't do it. You just have to be willing to burn the bridge that's always hindering you and step forward into the life that God has for you. Examine the obstacles that will hinder you from moving forward in obedience to Christ and the things that always trip you up and burn that ship. It could be anything that trips you up. Jealousy. It could be lying, stealing. It could be your past. It could be doubt, worry, lust. But if you know that's a problem area, give it to God and burn the bridge. There are some of us in here today who are following Jesus and some who are just considering following him. Some of you want your ministry to bloom, and in order for you to do this, you're going to have to burn some ships. Some of you are, are considering a decision on your relationship with God. Is it worth the struggle? Is it worth all the trials I have to go through? You're going to have to hold on to God's word and burn the ships that, const that you constantly run back to. There, that ship's not going to take you anywhere except into your past and destroy your future with God. You cannot grow in Christ if one day you are willing to serve Him and the next day you're choosing to look back on your past and make a choice to hang out there. Do you hear me? You can't hang out in your past. You have to look forward. Jesus did not deliver you from your sin, your past, your habits for you to surrender to the enemy out of fear. He, didn't ex he did not die for you so you could run back to that comfortable place. He's one of those parents, this is how my father and my mother was. Yes, you can do that schoolwork easy and it's not a problem for you. You didn't have to press in. You don't have to worry about it. It just came natural. But when I got in college and it wasn't so easy, I was ready to go home. But I had a dad who told me, it's always been easy for you. Now you're going to have to earn it. You can't look back to how it was because the choices you make now will affect your future. So he pushed me to press on. Our God is pushing you to press on. He doesn't want you to look back. So what if it was easy then to make you the man or woman of God that you need to be? There are going to be trials and there are going to be things that you're going to have to learn to overcome. And you can't overcome them if you're always looking back and you're unwilling to burn that, that ship. How hard is it to burn a relationship when you've, when, you've got, when you've been with somebody and they're always negative about it? There's nothing happy they can say about it. They can't talk to you about Jesus. Why hang out with them? If they're only going to bring you down, burn the ship and pray for them that they come to know Jesus and can burn their own ship. I didn't say desert them. But sometimes you have to pull away from relationships like that so that you can build your relationship and then lead them to Jesus. We have to burn our ships. You can't, you cannot, I'm going to say it again, he didn't deliver you from your past and your sin and your habits for you to just surrender to the enemy out of fear. You can't run back that way. The place that God has not called you into, why would you want to be there where he's not? Through Jesus, you are a victor. You can fight the battles, and you can win. Retreat is so easy when you have the option. But if you remove the option, it's easier to stand for God. How can we retreat back to where we were when we serve a God who has never lost a battle? 1 John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 9 says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And if you're always looking at the past or worrying about what might happen if you step out and do what he's called you to do or the circumstances surrounding your life, then that spirit of fear will come upon you and the devil will begin to attack your mind. But we don't have to live that way. This scripture says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not there, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me its prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. So there are afflictions we're going to go through, but by the power of God we can press on through them. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. We have a purpose. We all love the scripture, Jeremiah 29 11. He has a plan for us, a plan for us to prosper. Some of us need to burn some ships and get rid of some doubt and worry and step out into the ministry he called you to, to be in. If you're, if you're being attacked constantly, then no, that's the enemy not wanting you to achieve that. Burn that ship. Burn the ships that hinder you. Burn the ships so you cannot run away from your trials and run back to your comfort zone. Burn the ship and fight the good fight. And 1 Timothy 6 and 12 tells us to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. If he's called you out of sin, then he's called you into a purpose. You may not be a minister. You may not be a Sunday school teacher. But you are called to spread the word of God around with those that are around you. And if you are constantly looking back at things you wish you had done or mistakes that you have made, you need to burn a ship. It's time for all of us. We've all got ships we can burn. It's time that we realize that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And if I could be like, oh, this Cortez guy, and I'm going to war, and I'm willing to burn any escape plan that I have so that I can be a victor, I can be a victor in Jesus Christ because he's never lost a battle. He's never going to turn and run for me. He's never going to leave me stranded on an island. He's never going to forsake me, but he is always going to be there to pull me through. The problem is we need to stand up and burn some bridges. If that's a hindrance to you, call it on out of there. That's what my grandpa would say. That cow's no good. Let's call it on out of there. That means get rid of the dead. And go on and, and bring life into your life and to your ministry of what you want to do or what God has called you to do for the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes we get in a lull in our ministry and we think, okay, Lord, is this just, this is it. And we begin to get discouraged and we don't see things open up the way we want them to open up and we can't understand why we're constantly attacked or why we don't feel good or why. Well, let me give you a clue here. We have an enemy who does not want you to ever realize how powerful you are. And the scriptures just said we were. And if he can get you to dwell in that ship, then he can take you down with it. But if you're smart enough to realize who God is, or if you'll just take just a minute and say, I believe in you. It doesn't take a big fancy uh, prayer to burn a ship. It doesn't take pastor laying hands on you. It doesn't take a teacher telling you, well, you're, you're called to do this. Talk to God. Talk to Jesus and say, hey, Lord, you seen my struggles lately? I need a little help. I got a bridge that, I got a, a ship that constantly hinders me. It's like the enemies in a, when, in, if you ever watch any war movies, I'm a big action movie girl. So, do you know how many times, if you've watched all those movies, how they burn a bridge so the enemy can't cross the river? Even in the Civil War, they fought night and day at a certain time for one bridge, because it was the only bridge to get them across the river. And hundreds of men died at that bridge, because they were neither one willing to sacrifice until one man blew up the bridge. He did it because he was tar tired of seeing men die, useless deaths over a bridge that neither side was going to give up. So he blew up the bridge and the battle was done. Some of us need to burn a bridge or burn a ship. If the bridge is burnt, you can't cross the river and go back to where you were. You have to go straight on towards the path that God has called you into. Don't you think it's time we burn a bridge? Would you all stand? Hi everyone, 
Cornbread Chris Hynek here, of course, representing Resonate Town at Resonate Church. We want to say a special thank you for what you've been with us right here today. Well, no matter where you are, whether you're joining us live and in person at Resonate Church, or whether you're joining us on television via your syndicated station, or whether you're joining us internationally, courtesy of our YouTube simulcast, or no matter where you are, thank you so much for your support each and every week. Now, just saying, Cornbread, Resonate Church. You know, you got to bless us so much, but we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Glad you asked. There are four ways in which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, you can resonate your giving by joining us live and in person right here at Resonate Church at 418 County Road 421, right off Highway 1 and Stadium Boulevard, here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Join our worship experience, Sunday, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m., Wednesdays at 6.30. Option number two, online. You see that laptop right there with that orange screen with a time link on it? Well, all you have to do, if you want to resonate your giving online, is just go to that time link and follow the directions here. Also, make sure you specify where you want your gift going towards. It's safe, secure, easy, simple to do. And that's if you want to resonate your giving online. All you got to do is go to that top link, follow all the instructions there. You can resonate your giving that way. Option number three, your cell phone. Look, we all got one. We might as well put it to you, shall we? But guess what? If you want to resonate your giving using your cell phone, it's very simple to do. It's, it's a thing called text to give. All you have to do is text the word give to that 501 number that you see right there on your screen. Safe, secure, fast, simple, easy to do. Option number four, mail. If you want to mail your contribution to us via check or money order, you can do so with the address on your screen. But let's specify this. If you are sending check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resonate Church. Let me repeat that. If you are sending check or money order, to that address on your screen. Please make all your checks and your money orders payable to Resonate Church. And those are your four options on which you can resonate your giving. And you, if you want more info, all you have to do is go to our website, resonatechurchar.org for all the details. Ooh. More deep stuff, Pam. Thank you very much. What are the ships in your life that you need to burn? What attachments do you need to get rid of? We said this on this program so many times and we don't mind reiterating it. And for those we can't let go. Um, please take this. Pastors talked about it. Multiple people have talked about it. Even Pam Ovis tonight talked about it. Let me reiterate a subject. If God has forgiven you, your past is gone. Let me say that again. If God has forgiven you, your past is gone. Stop bringing it up. I mean, faith is worth the effort, y'all. What ships in your life are keeping you from moving forward? I mean, Pam Hova said no on the head. It's still a, it's, it's great, you know, granted, we should share, share one another's burdens, but I think we take that a little too far. Why haven't we consulted God first? Maybe that's just another ship you need to burn. Why 
whatever is keeping you from moving forward and progressing in God, let it go. Burn the ship. Move forward. Stop letting that ship hinder you. Stop letting it keep you from you experiencing happiness and success. But in this case, God. Whatever ship you have or whatever obstacles that are there that's keeping you from moving forward, you want to move forward, you got to let them go. Leave them behind. You move forward. You can't look to the right. You can't look to the left. You can't look behind you. There's a reason why when it comes to the armor of God, everything else is covered except your vision. You want to know why? Because the whole, armor, the whole armor of God is not designed for you to look to the right, to the left, or to even look behind you. It's designed for you to move forward. That's the that's the that's the that's the point of the helmet of salvation, and it points to the head first. If you really think about it, it always goes to the head first. Can't hang out in the past. You gotta move forward. There's too much at stake, including your life. Move forward. Burn the ships as keeping you from progressing forward. Don't forget to hit that subscriber button. Especially if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell. You get notifications of any and everything concerning our show. You will not miss an episode. And for those of you on Facebook, hey, like, share, follow us on on Facebook at the information provided there. God, thank you so much for letting us resonate your sound. Thank you and all for watching. Until we see you here this Thursday night for our entire crew. And everyone here at Resonate to Sound. I'm Chris Heineken. We say to you, show love, give peace, you know it. Resonate Jesus. We will see you this Thursday night in prime time at 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on on this YouTube channel or right here on this on this local television station. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you Thursday. Have a good night, everybody, and good night, Canada.